Welcome to City Week, ladies and gentlemen. Today I have on guests that the community had an opportunity to meet on Veterans Day. Today my guests are none other than Sergeant First Class James Doyle, along with his wife Kim. I want to welcome both of you all to the program. Thank you. Well, let me, let me just get started. I said a couple of weeks ago, the community was introduced to First Class James and you, Kim, because of the fact that you all were the recipients of a home. Let me just ask you a little bit. Talk a little bit about you all as a family, if you don't mind for me, Kim. Okay. Well, we have two boys, Tristan, who's 13, and Darian, who's 9. And they're pretty much uh, whatever activities they're on, that, that's what we're doing for the month and you know, or the however long the program is. I mean, we're just your, you know, typical, regular, everyday family, you know, just making it day to day and, you know, trying to keep the boys busy and active and keep them out of trouble, which also keeps us busy and active. So it's pretty interesting, an outdoorsy type family. You know, we love playing, the boys love playing outside. We like just sitting back on the porch or on the, you know, the back in the backyard and fishing and, you know, all kinds of stuff. So just your typical Typical family. Okay, well, very good. And I, I can I understand having two boys and having them in the activities probably keeps you on the go quite a bit, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. <laughs> well, James, now, and I understand uh, that uh, you were in the military, served 20 yeah. years in the Army. Talk about your experience there a little bit for us. Well, it's, uh, being in the military is experience in itself. And when you spend 20 years in it, it's almost like a whole new life. Because uh, I just recently retired, and it's uh, you're so used to a a schedule of doing everything. You know, you've done it for 20 years, you knew that you were getting up at five o'clock every morning, you're gonna go run four miles, do push-ups, sit-ups, and everything else. And you're gonna train all day, and you're gonna get to go home in the evening sometime if you weren't deployed or out in the field training. And uh, I mean, now it's like, you know, I get up at 6.15, I'm, I'm just trying to keep a schedule, <laughs> you know, and I'm going to drink my coffee, I'm going, God, what am I gonna do now? <laughs> so it's, it's a, uh, the military is a, uh, a great place. It was a great experience for 20 years. I wouldn't, if I had to do it all over again, I probably would, no, no doubt in my mind. Uh, I, I think uh, it, it's, it's just, it's, it's a great experience. Well, great, you it, know. A lot of things to do, a lot of things to learn, a good trade if you were in the right, I mean, I was infantry, so I, mean, I, I pretty much can pull triggers okay. <laughs> and do a few other things, but uh, there's a lot of good trades out there that could really benefit people in, when they get out of the military also. So. Well, very good. And I know that everybody has thanked you, James, and, and also you, Kim, for providing support to James when he's away from you and the family. So I just want to say here publicly on, on the station to thank you for all the service that you rented to our country because there's not a lot of people that can go out and do the things that you and all the other military men and women have done and make that sacrifice for our country. So I thank you very much for that. You're, You're talking about infantry. My youngest son uh, graduated from infantry school down in Fort Benning as mm -hmm. well. So I, I do know being a military you know, family or having someone in the military, that's a big sacrifice. Mm -hmm. now, let me just ask you a little bit. You guys were the recipient of a new home, and I understand, Kim, as we were coming into the studio, the, the unpacked ferry hadn't gotten there and gotten everything kind of settled down for you guys. No. Talk about a little bit, James, first of all, about the selection process, and then Kim, I want to ask you, how did you feel when James told you about this? So, James, talk about the selection for us. The uh, Square Foot Ministries contacted the uh, Wounded Warrior Program on uh, Fort Benning. And uh, they uh, asked for certain criteria. Had to have a purple heart. Had to be a wounded warrior from combat. And uh, I just happened to have a purple heart. And uh, my name was put into the hat for this a bit, the possibility to receive this home. And uh, it was like a day or so later, uh, Mr. Clark from Scriffit Ministries also uh, called me and talked to me and got my bio and, and all that stuff. And uh, it was like maybe the very next day is when I talked to him again. And uh, I, mean, I didn't want to get my hopes up and everything. You know, this is a great opportunity, mm -hmm. right? But uh, I, I asked him, I mean, I don't want to get my hopes up. I'm getting out of the military. I need to figure out what I'm doing, right? He goes, we're 100% we're going with you for this selection, right? So I, I guess my bio and, my, and the Purple Heart and everything else just fit me right into the slot what they wanted to do for the bill that happened on Veterans Day, very which is very a very squared away thing. Very good. You know, Kim, I mean, how did you feel when James came and told we're going to be getting a new home? 
Well, at first, I guess he didn't want to jinx us because he was like, how would you feel about moving to LaGrange? And I said, well, there, I didn't know much about LaGrange. I knew it was close to West Point Lake, and we had been out there for a couple of his fishing tournaments. And I said, well, I said, you know, I said, if, it's, if that's where we're meant to be, you know, it'll happen. And then sure enough, he told me, and, and we were just excited, you know, and it's kind of like a fresh start for all of us, you know, because he's getting out of the military, a new place for the boys, you know, to grow some roots, really, because we won't be moving again since he's out of the, the military. And I said, this is some place where we can really settle down, you know, really get to know the community and get the boys, you know, into whatever. So it was... Uh, it was pretty uh, mind blowing when he when he first told me that we were going to be the recipients, and I and I was still in shock. I didn't want to tell anybody. I didn't want to jinx it. I'm like, you know, and I'm sitting there going, oh, I want to tell somebody. You know, I need to tell somebody, but I I, I couldn't do it. So <laughs> yeah, it was still uh, still. I mean, all the way up to the actual day of the build, it was still. You know, is this really going to happen? Uh -huh. And as the closer we got, the closer we got, and you know, we actually came up here and looked at the lot it was going to be built on. We're going, this this really might happen. And then we actually went to Opelika to their, their main office there and actually started picking out the uh, colors and all the stones and everything else for the house going, this is, we're getting closer. This is, is going to happen, this, right? This, this is going to happen. Right. And then next thing you know, we, we, you know, 11 hours, we had a house built and it's beautiful. Oh my goodness, isn't that something? <laughs> it's something. Yeah. Now, let me ask you the question quick because I'm always interested. And I know that the, the house bill is bringing you all to LaGrange here, but had you, and you said you didn't really know a lot about it, but what has your experience been thus far being here in LaGrange? Uh, I like the, uh, it's, it's not a small town at all. It's because uh, we came from Phoenix City, Alabama, and that's a lot smaller than LaGrange, but it is a big, a big city, but it's got the small town feel to it. You know, it, it's not, you can drive anywhere, it's not overcrowded, mm -hmm. it's not overpopulated, and we drove by the schools yesterday to where the boys will be going, and the schools were humongous. <laughs> yeah, we were looking, I was like, that's a middle school? That was like my high school size. <laughs> so it's just, it's just been really nice to, you know, just drive around downtown and, you know, other parts of LaGrange and just, it's, it's just been amazing that the whole small town feel, but it's not really a small town. Very good. Well, we definitely want to welcome both of you all and your family to our city. And of course, you know, if there's ever anything that we can do down at City Hall, by all means, come in, give us a call. We'd be happy to assist you all. Now, let me just talk a little bit about the volunteers a little bit. I know there was numerous volunteers that were involved. Of course, we mentioned Square Foot Ministry, and there were some others uh, not to try to leave out any because we probably will omit some. But there were a number of volunteers that came out that day uh, on November the 11th to help make your home uh, a reality and stuff. How did that, how did that seem, the overwhelming you know, support of volunteers, how did that make you feel, James? And, uh, it, 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 it made me feel, it, it was humbling. It, it was completely humbling knowing that it was on Veterans Day and, and everyone out there, it was a day off for them. You know, people from Sun Trust Banks and Square Foot Ministries and all the other volunteers that, that work for them when they do things. And uh, I mean, they came out there on their time to help build a, a home for a veteran. And uh, it, it's just overwhelming knowing that there's that still, that many people would still be willing to do something like that after all these years of issues that we've had with the military, yeah. wars and everything else, it's just there's still support for us out there. And it's, it's, very, uh, it's very humbling. It's very uh, nice to still see that. Very good, you know, and I, I saw and read in the paper that you were able to help raise the first wall to yeah. your home there. Yeah. And again, I'm sure, just talk about that a little bit. Yeah, we, uh, the whole family, even the, even the two boys got to help raise that first wall. And they braced it. And we literally turned around and went and got a live interview on, uh, I think it was Channel 5. It was Fox, Fox News. Fox News. And we turned back around and all the walls were up. <laughs> we're going, huh. oh my Yeah, Because, you know, they said they're going to build this home in 11 hours. I would say, there's no way you're going to do it. That's impossible. And when I turned around, it was like, I was going, wow, this might happen. That's right. I was still skeptical about it, but <laughs> it might happen. That's right. You know, and then a couple hours later, they're already working on the roof. I'm going, wow, this is, this is ridiculously fast. fast that's right. And you know, they brought a bunch, a bunch of subject matter experts in that do that for a living mm -hmm. and it volunteered, which is, you know, just once again, humbling that they volunteered to do that. I mean, these people make a lot of money doing what they do. That's right. They did it for free. Oh my. You know, and it's just very overwhelming on it. Well, you know, I think when we think about the sacrifice that you and all the other military personnel make, then that was just a small drop in the bucket to say thank you once again for your years of service, 
for your dedication to our country and, and to you, Kim, again, being a support. Because it, it takes a lot out of a family when the husband is not there. You know, the boys don't have their father there and stuff. So, again, I can't say thank you enough. Uh, we, uh, you probably saw when we had some military personnel came home and this, the town turned out to welcome them back. You know, again, we just can't say thank you enough for all that you all do. Settling into your home, what's that going to be like, Kim? Oh, it's still crazy. I mean, Thanksgiving is tomorrow, and I still um, got most of my kitchen unpacked, but, and then the boys' rooms are all pretty much where they're going to, everything where it's going to be, but yeah, the living room and our ba in the ba master bedroom, we're still trying to, and the, the garage is full of boxes, literally full of boxes, so um, it, it's just been crazy, you know, just trying to get everything unpacked, and this is, you know, every time I unpack something and look around the house, and I, it just, it just bring, you know, it just more, 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 right? It is. It just <laughs> seems like no matter. I, f I finish one box, and the next thing I know, I got two more boxes sitting there, and I'm like, whoa, what happened? <laughs> so yeah, it just seems like it's never ending. Absolutely. But yeah. Well, again, James, Kim, welcome to our community. And we, again, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, James, for your years of service. Um, and I look to uh, go out to the home to visit. Uh, to see. I know that we had some take footage of that, so we probably get opportunity to, to show that here on the show. So again, I want to thank you both for coming in and being on City Week. Thank you thank for you having us. Sir. Thank you. All right, we're here with Doug, president of Square Foot Ministries. So Doug, tell us all about what you're doing here today. Well, we're, we're out here trying to build a house in 11 hours and we're having a good time at it. Good time at it. What time did you get started this morning? 6 a.m. sharp. Wow. So tell us all about Square Foot Ministries. How did you get started? What do you do? Is this your first house? Give us a little background. Now, we've been banging around for about 10 years now. We're a 501c3. We're a, a nonprofit organization, and we build houses for those who can't afford houses for themselves. We've been doing this for about 10 years now, and uh, we chose the Doyle family through Fort Benning this year, and we wanted to do a Veterans Day build in honor of our veterans. Oh, that's so nice. And how do you organize all this? How many volunteer organizations do you have out here? Well, we're partnering up with with SunTrust Bank and America's Home Place to uh, put this effort together and everybody's come together. We've got a lot of volunteers through SunTrust Bank and a lot of the cooperation from America's Home Place as well too. So it's a team effort right now. Yeah, that's so great. Um, we've been out here since six o'clock this morning and it's about seven and a half hours left. Are you confident that it's going to get done in one day? Is this your first time doing it in one day? This is our first time doing it in one day. Typically we do them in seven days. We decided to get a little ambitious this year and go for one day. Just get everybody out here and have a good time to see what we can do. We figured if we can't do it, nobody can. Exactly. Well, thank you so much, Doug. Thank you. We're here now with Mr. Alan Tabor. He's the CEO of SunTrust West Georgia. How are you doing this morning? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you. All right, we're here with the company that's building this house in one day. So tell me SunTrust involvement. How did y'all get connected? Well, American's Home Place is uh, a client of ours and, uh, and contacted us and asked us to participate in this great cause. And uh, we were more than uh, excited and willing to do so. And uh, along with them and Square Foot Ministries, we're um, here together making this happen, providing the land and the home for this deserving family. All right, and so are all these volunteers, are they all SunTrust employees? Well, we've got several of our employees here, um, and this is a holiday for us, and yet we've got about 50 of our teammates that are here today. Have, uh, some from Atlanta, some from Columbus, and some from LaGrange. All have come here to help uh, make this possible. Wow, so is this something that SunTrust does often, partner with different organizations to do amazing things like building houses? Yeah, most definitely. We, uh, we call it Solid Gives Back, and uh, our company is very dedicated to helping our communities and help make causes like this come true. So um, we're excited to participate. It is something we do uh, on an ongoing basis. Not necessarily build houses, but all kind of ways that we help the community, and this is just one of them. So first house, I guess, we've done, at least for our, our market. Okay, well, thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. We're here now with the recipients of this house that was built in one day, Kim and James Doyle. How are y'all doing today? Just Good. fine. All right, so how does it feel? How did, what, are you, what are your emotions right now? Oh, my gosh. It's uh, overwhelming. Overwhelming? overwhelming. Yeah. yeah. I've been crying several times today. 
Oh, I'm sure it's an emotional experience. Oh, yeah. Now, which one of you were in the military? I am. You are? Or I was, yes. You are? Yeah. Okay, what branch of the military were you in? Army. Army? Yeah. Okay. How long have you been retired? Uh, since October 1st of this year. Okay, congratulations. So you said now, we were talking earlier, you live in um, Phoenix City, Alabama, and you're moving to LaGrange. Yep. Are you excited about the move? Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, very much so. All right. How did you get connected with um, this organization? The, uh, I had a, uh, a friend. Well, they were, they were looking on uh, Fort Benning, WTU, for uh, a Purple Heart recipients that meet the criteria for something like this. And a, uh, a friend of mine, a sergeant major, a retired sergeant major, put my name in for it. And they, and they chose me so I meet all the prerequisites they need to do something like this. So I, got, I, got pretty, I, I consider myself lucky to walk into something like that. So. Wow, you're a Purple Heart recipient? Yeah. That's so interesting. Tell us more about that. Well, I got uh, blowed up in Iraq by an IED back in 2003. Uh, lucky i mean there's a lot of people that are worse than me missing legs and arms and stuff like that i got i got lucky I, i'm still uh, a full body i have my aches and pains but i have you know very capable of still doing a, a lot of things with my kids and family so can you tell us more about your military career what you've been what you've seen all you've been doing yeah uh, i joined the military uh in 1991 uh not straight out of high school it was a couple years after i graduated and uh you know as the time frame that Desert Shield and Desert Storm was going on, I said, you know, that's something I want to do. You know, I want to go fight for my country, all right? And uh, unfortunately, I was in basic training. They seized fire for that. So I've been chasing that kind of stuff for, you know, 20 years. Uh, I've been stationed uh, most of my career at Fort Campbell, Kentucky with the 101st Screaming Eagles. And uh, in 2004, well, while I was at the 101st, I, I was deployed to Kosovo, uh, I was deployed to Panama for Operation uh, Safe Half Passage for the Cuban refugees problem they had over there. And then also went to Iraq in 2003, where I received, oh yeah, I went to Korea too for a year. I got it. But, you know, I went to Iraq, see my injuries, came back from Iraq, and uh, I got a permanent change of station to Fort Benning. And I've pretty much been here the uh the rest of my career at uh, Officer Canada School, instructing uh, the newly new officers in the United States Army on uh, doctrine and traits and everything from war and, and everything I am really up to date on at that time. <laughs> and uh, and then I just recently retired, one October, like I was saying. And uh, that's pretty much uh, everything uh, besides all the training and you know, all the deployments that you know the Joint Readiness Training Centers and and all those kind of things like that. Uh, missed a whole bunch of anniversaries and birthdays and Christmases and everything else. But uh, it's, it's uh, very much worth the time away from your family to support the uh, interests of the United States of America. So That's so interesting. Well, thank you so much for your service. Ms. Doyle, how hard was it or how easy was it or how did it feel to have him be gone for so long and serving our country for so long? Um, it actually wasn't too hard because my dad was infantry also, so I kind of grew up in the Army life. I knew, I knew what to expect. I knew what I was getting into. Um, I actually had pity on the civilian wives that their husbands were home all the time, and I'm thinking, how do you do it? How can you, you know, I'm ready when he's home. Okay, isn't it time for you to go in the field, you know, something? You need to get out of the house. I'm ready for you to go. And so I used to figure out how did civilian wives do it, and now that he's retired and, you know, he's had... Uh, his leave for the what, about three months before he retired, and I'm thinking, all right, dude, don't you need to go fishing or something? Isn't it time for you to get out of the house? But it's actually, since we've been here at Fort Benning, it's been really great to have him home for all the little things. You know, it was hard. Like when uh, our first son was born, he was actually had went to have coffee with my dad at the coffee shop, and uh, he left at 4. My water broke at 4.30. And so I had to call and let them know at the school he was going to that I was in labor. And we had talked about it because it was hard for him to get in this school that no matter what, you stay in this school. And we got lucky that they actually let him go for, what, about two hours? Yeah, about two hours, yeah. So he got to come after we had our son. So, but, you know, I mean, it's small, small sacrifices, so. All right, well, thank you so much. I've enjoyed talking to you all today. Oh, you're Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks. Thank you.
Alright, we're here with Pete with he's on the board of Square Foot Ministries and we're here with two of the Doyle children. How are you doing today, Mr. I'm Pete? doing great. I'm way too excited. How did you how are you involved with getting all this put together? I know it's a big task. Yes, it is. We're um, the board of Square Foot, we've lined up everything. We're trying to get everything organized and get the um, the right specialist people out here to, to build. This is just way I'm way too excited. You're excited? Yes. And how are y'all feeling today? We're feeling good. Great. What's your name? Darian. Tristan. Tristan, are y'all excited about your new home? Yes, ma'am. Are you excited about moving to LaGrange? Yes, ma'am. How old are you? 13. You're 13? How old are you? Nine. Nine. Wow, y'all here helping, getting everything done? Yes. All right, well, yes, thank you so much. No problem. Alright, we're here with Lionel Orbea. He's with Magnum Drywall. How are you doing today? Pretty good. And what did you, what was your part in making this amazing thing come to play? We did all the labor of the drywall. The drywall? The drywall and um, we were talking, you said it was hung in 20 minutes. Hung about 20 minutes. Wow. You know, 150 sheets. 150 sheets? How long does that normally take on a regular job? It take about, you know, a good five to six hours, so pretty much all day. Okay, and you said it took about two or three hours to get it hung and molded and Tape, taped, splattered. Yeah. <laughs> Texture and all, yes. Goodness, that takes more like five days on a regular job? Five days, you know, you let it dry and stuff, so. Okay, so did you bring more people today? What made it go so much faster? Yeah, a combination of all the people that came out today, you know. Everybody worked in, uh, in teamwork and we just made it happen. Where are you from? Do you originate in Atlanta or I'm nearby? From Miami, but live in Commerce, Georgia. Oh, okay. Well, thank you so much. It was nice speaking with you. Thank you. All right, now we're here with Mr. Corey Thompson. He just heard about this project going on and decided to come down here and volunteer. How are you today? Doing well. This is a great day and a great project. How did you get involved with it? How did you find out about it? Actually, a friend of mine uh, called me a couple days ago and said, hey, she heard about this, read about it in the paper, and so I asked another friend of mine, so all three of us kind of came down this morning and spent the day here and working up a sweat and having a great time. That's great. It's all about volunteerism. If you know him, or if you think you might know him, he's from <laughs> Fox 5. Tell us more about that. Well, I spent most of my career doing what you're doing, holding a microphone and asking people questions and stuff. Now I'm doing some marketing, public relations, and teaching uh, some broadcasting. But uh, I, you know, I've always wanted to give back to the community, and I've done volunteer work ever since I was in college. And so, uh, so this is a, gr a great opportunity to do that again, give back to the community, especially here on Veterans Day. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Bill, he's with America's Home Place. So Bill, tell me your involvement in this big project. In this project, what we're doing is we are, takes a lot of scheduling and planning. And the planning and the scheduling and then being here to see that the process works thoroughly like it's supposed to. That's, that's what we're doing. All right, and I know y'all typically do seven-day builds. Is this your first one-day build? Yes, it is. It's our first one-day build. Uh, and it's went extremely smooth, a lot smoother than what we thought. Uh, we do a lot of seven-day builds, and we just make sure that everybody's happy, and it's just all about the scheduling and making sure that the process runs like a sewing machine, and then everybody's happy. <laughs> Y'all cover everything, every aspect of it from beginning to end? Yes, from start to finish, everything is turnkeyed. Inside is complete. The uh, house will be clean today before we, we leave from here. Um, they just move their stuff in, and everything's good to go. And as far as the contractors go, did you bring more contractors than you normally do or you work with the same people um, on a regular basis? Yes, we brought all of the people that we generally work with, which they have several crews that work for them. And what we had them do was to bring everybody that they had with them that works for them. That way we could make this thing happen like it has today. Okay, well, just witnessing this has been an amazing experience. Thank you so much. And Thank you. I'll let you get back to work. I know you have plenty to do. All right, you have a great day. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. <you> <laughs> 
we're here with our Lieutenant Governor, Mr. Casey Cagle. So how does it feel to be here and witnessing something like this? Well, it's a great day and obviously we're so thrilled, uh, not only for James and the family, but to see 200 volunteers that have come together to on Veterans Day to really honor a, a wounded warrior, an individual who obviously received the Purple Heart and sacrificed so much for our freedom. And this community has reached out in a way and, 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 and a, in a way of service that I think is very, very special. So I'm honored to be here and honored to uh, see this happen in 12 hours. And along with that, to see the sheetrock, I didn't get to see it, but to go up in 22 minutes that's uh, pretty amazing. So this is a great, uh, a great day, and it's a great day for the community, and, and really uh, it honors us uh, to be to be Georgians. All right. Well, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining for City Week this week. My guests have been none other than James and Kim Doyle. Thank you all for being on the show again. Well. And ladies and gentlemen, we just want to ask that you will continue to remember them, not only just today, but all the ways, because they are new in our community, so I'm sure they will continue to welcome your support. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, I want to welcome James and Kim Doyle to the show, and always want to invite you back for more of City Week.